Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover the isPressed function in AutoIt. This is a really handy function. You can use it to check if any of the keys on your keyboard or buttons on your mouse are pressed. And then you can execute code if they are. This is nice if you want to have macros that control your program or if you want to change the direction of your program based on which buttons you're pressing. In this video, we're gonna cover two ways of doing this. The first is just a single check to see if it's pressed or not and then continue. And the second way we're gonna cover is checking in a loop. So, you know, while condition is true, keep checking for that key press. To get started, do at the top of your uh, script, you're gonna do number sign include space and then those little uh, pointy brackets misc.au3 like that for this first way we're just going to be doing a single check so i'm going to do a sleep for about two seconds just so we have a, t a chance to start pressing the key before it checks if we don't do this it's fine if you don't do this in your code but what'll happen is you'll press F5 and it'll run your script and it'll immediately check to see if you pressed it. So since this is the only thing in our script, I'm just putting this sleep at the front. All right, so to do the is pressed check, to type in if and then underscore is pressed and then your parentheses. Inside of these parentheses, you have to put the code for the key that you're trying to check. Here I have the documentation for the isPressed function. I'll have this linked in the description of the video. But in this documentation, it shows you all of the key codes, basically, for the mouse buttons and keyboard buttons. For this video, we're going to check if the uh, shift key has been pressed. So we're gonna use the code 10. So I'm gonna go back here. Inside these parentheses, I'm gonna put quotes and type in 10, and that's it. So then we're gonna type then, press enter a couple times, and if, and we're good to go. So now this is gonna work, but nothing's gonna happen if this is pressed. So I'm just gonna do a quick tooltip. Um, I'm going to put it, we'll leave it at wherever my mouse is. So we're going to do key is pressed. And then uh, let's go ahead and do else. Tooltip key is not press. So a moment ago I said I'm going to leave the tooltip at my mouse. If you're not familiar with tooltips, you can choose where on the screen they pop up. The way you would do that is at the end of the tooltip, after the quote, you would just do comma and then wherever you wanted it to show up. Like I usually do zero comma zero, which is the top left corner of your screen. But to keep this easier, we're just gonna keep it wherever the mouse is, which is just leaving it like this. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna press F5 and, oh, I forgot to add a sleep to show us, to let us see the uh, tooltip. So I'm gonna do two seconds like that. Now let's check. So I'm gonna press F5 and key is not pressed because I'm not pressing it. Now I'm gonna press the shift key. So I'm pressing it, key is pressed. So it works, awesome. You can also check to see if more than one key is being pressed at a time, and if they are, then you can execute your code. So for this test, I'm gonna check to see if the shift key and the control key are being pressed at the same time. So that's gonna be key codes 10 and 11. So this is pretty easy to do. Just go ahead and copy the isPressed function we had in our if statement, and then at the end of it, press space, type the word and, paste it again, and change that from 10 to 11. Now it'll look like this. By this point, you should be familiar with if statements and using and, uh, but if you're not, basically what we're doing is we're saying if this function returns true, meaning shift is pressed, and 
if this function returns true, meaning control is pressed, go ahead and execute our code. So if I run this and only press shift, key is not pressed. I'm gonna run this again, press control. Nothing, key is not pressed. One more time, but I'm gonna press both. Key is pressed, awesome. Now let's try checking a mouse button to see if that's being pressed. For this check, let's go ahead and see if I'm pressing the back button on my mouse, which is gonna be the X1. So the key for this X1 mouse button is gonna be 05. So we're gonna go back to our script and instead of 10, we're gonna do 05 and press F5 to see if it works. I'm not pressing it, key is not pressed. Let's go ahead and run this again, but this time I am pressing it. Key is pressed, awesome. So this is how you would do a single check. To do it in a loop, it's really similar, but they have a, a recommended practice, something you should do with this if you wanna do it in a loop. In the documentation, you'll see that if uh, they have this remark here saying, if you call this function repeatedly, you should open user32.dll and pass the handle. You should also make sure to close the handle at the end of the script. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not too sure what this means, like why they're suggesting this, but they're telling you to do it, so we're gonna cover how. So we're back in our script. We're gonna make a new, D, uh, sorry, a new um, variable. Let's call this user dll. Now we're gonna do dll open parentheses quotes, and then we're gonna do user 32.dll and close it off. Now go ahead and double click on the user dll variable that we created and copy it. Now where your is pressed method is or your function, after you have your key code, at the end of it, you're gonna put a comma and then paste the DLL variable we created. Now what's interesting about this is this works right now. Even though this isn't in a loop, it's gonna work still. To demonstrate, if I press F5 and hold down the back button, you can see the key is pressed. Before continuing, let's go to the bottom of our script and type dll close, oops, and we're gonna enter the variable user dll. Now we have to put this in a loop. I think that it would be best to put this in a for loop just for the purposes of this video. So what we're gonna do is above our if statement, we're gonna press enter and type for create a new variable called i and we're going to say i equals zero and then we're going to say two and let's go to five and we're going to type step plus one now below our end if we're going to type the keyword next and then we're going to select this indent it and our for loop is done to explain this for a second we're creating a variable called i and setting it to zero and then until i equals five, we're gonna step once, which means we're gonna continue. So then i equals zero, step once. Now i equals one. Is it five yet? Nope, okay, go again. Now we step again, i equals two. Is it five? Nope, keep going. So like that. The keyword next means this is what you do after we've finished our for loop. So everything below here, happens afterwards. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and I'm gonna move our sleep to outside of this if statement. So it looks like this. You don't have to do this, it's kind of just a personal preference. Uh, basically, since either one of these is going to activate uh, sleep, it means it's always gonna sleep. So we could just move the sleep out of these two uh, conditions and put it at the bottom. This is gonna serve two purposes. One, it'll keep the tooltip showing, but also it pauses between each iteration of the loop and gives us a chance to press the button. Anyways, let's test it out. So I'm gonna press F5. Key is not pressed. Move my mouse, key is not pressed. Key is not pressed. 
Key is not pressed. Now I'm going to press it. Key is pressed. Key is pressed. And the uh, script has ended. And that is how you use the is pressed function. Make sure when you guys use it, if you're doing it in a loop, you do this open DLL and make sure you close it. Like I said, I don't really know why, but they're advising us to do it, so we should follow it. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the documentation is going to be in the description of the video. So if you want more info and if you want to see those key codes, you can get them there. That's it. Thanks for watching.